as it is launch day, do you do you shit a brick on a day like today to, to see how it goes? Or are you are you really confident with with the material? Because I stuck it on last night for the first time. I've heard a couple of the tracks, but I stuck it on the album. And immediately I was like, bloody hell, it's a Def Leppard album, you know, Fr- from the yeah. word go, it's there, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I, no, I don't get nervous at all because at the end of the day, the, the, the way I look at it is like we make records and always have done for ourselves. And we just yeah. hope that people come along with us. So if we see a bad review or somebody says, yeah, not my thing, I don't care. I don't really don't mind. I don't care. I don't mind. It's, it's absolutely fine if somebody's not doesn't get it, you know. So I'm not nervous because I've got nothing to be nervous about. But I am also aware of the fact that for the last three months, with you know, you, you have to send the records out to people so that they can... A lot of magazines have got three-month lead-off times to print. So a lot of the guys have had the album since February. And you get word back that all going, this is the best thing you guys have done since this year. It's the best thing you've ever done. It's it's a, an amazing record, best this lineup's ever created um, under, under such strange circumstances as well to make the record. So I'm aware of the fact that there's been a lot of good positive vibes about this record from within the band and from without the band, you know, like the record label, our management, friends of ours for what that's worth and the media that have, that have heard it. It's been mostly very positive towards this album. So I don't have any nerves at all. In fact, it is like, it's like being an expectant father, especially for us on this record, because we've been sitting on it for 18 months. We actually had the album finished by the end of 2020. I think we did a couple of retweets because we could early 21, but we didn't want to release it in the middle of a pandemic. And then it's out for a year. And then we go out on tour. I just didn't see the sense in that. None of us did. So we we said no we'll sit on it and then when we know that the pandemic's not necessarily over but livable that's the time that we can drop this thing This album was recorded very, very differently. I know you guys weren't necessarily together for a lot of us. You did did most of it through the, the whole lockdown thing. Um, is that something that excites you, that the fact that that technology is there now? Because yeah. when you were doing all those big albums in the 80s, it, it was a massive expense, you know? Yeah, it was a massive expense. This one wasn't, you know. But the, the difference is... Similar but different, let's put it that way. When we did Hysteria, there's not one time in any of the recording sessions that anybody was in the same room as, as each other. Really? I, mean, I think there's literally there was, there was. I think the guitar solo section of Love Bites, Phil and Steve actually sat opposite each other in the control room working things out. Mm. Otherwise, they did the drums, then they did the bass, and then we did the guitar, and then Mutt would get me in. And when I was singing with Mutt, everybody else said, leave the country, never mind, leave the studio. <laughs> so in many respects, working individually is nothing new. It's just that the other guys were either in the next room or they weren't there at all. So mm. doing the album this way was no different. Technology allowed us to record individually the same way as we've always have done, except just not in the same building. Mike Garson, what the, what? Yeah. Mike Garson is a friend of mine since, sadly, since David Bowie passed, but I knew him long before then. Um, I met him when I first met, I mean, I first met Bowie at Bono's house in 1989, but I met David a bunch of times when he played Dublin. He tends to play the little clubs here, like when he did Tin Machine down at McGonagall's or whatever yeah. it was. Or the bag it in rather, and and when he played the factory, he opened up the rehearsal room to let people in. His production team used to work for us, so it was an easy backstage yeah. pass for me. Nice. You know, and I met Garson then twenty odd years ago. But after David passed and Mike started doing these birthday celebration shows, he asked me to be involved and as one of many singers. So we did one in Brixton, we did one in LA, and then we got remote. So I've been working with him on a yearly basis for four or five years now. 
Um, so I just rang him up when we, I'd written these songs on the piano, but like Davy Bowie, when he wrote Life on Mars, was sensible enough to have Rick Wakeman play it. <laughs> uh, we kind of figured the same thing. And I said to Phil, I said, what about Mike? Because, you know, I, I, can, I can tap him up. And he went, yeah, it'd be amazing. Me and Phil are huge fans of Aladdin Insane. Huge fans of Aladdin. That's it. But they, it's all full circle, isn't it? Yeah. So I rang him and I said, you want to do a couple of Leopard songs? He was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So we sent him, the, I literally sent, sent him an MP3. And he did it to the MP3. He didn't even ask for the stems. He just wanted, oh. you know, it's like karaoke, I suppose. And he said, oh, this is a rough. And he sent the rough over. He did on an electric keyboard. And we went, awesome. And he said, right, I'll do it properly on Saturday on my big grand piano. I just need to get my engineer in. And he did it. And, you know, it was a nice trade-off. I do the Bowie things for him. He played on a Def Leppard record. <laughs> So right, that but that piano intro on Aladdin Sane, it just it did, the very first time I ever heard that it blew me away, and I'm sure I know it did the same for you and Phil, but to have them play on your record and yeah. Alison Krauss, and you've made a great record, Joe, and and I, I have to say it, you sound really strong on it vocally, you sound really strong. Yeah, because I I didn't have to rush. You see, singers normally end up with this situation where everybody spends all this time making these great songs. It's like, we've only got three weeks left and you've got to do all the vocals now. So if you end up with a sore throat or you overdo it one day and you need a day's rest, you can't have one. That was gone. I just sang whenever I felt I was in good shape. You know, and if I was, you know, if I needed to take a break, I'd take a break. But rather than take a 20 minute break, I'd take a couple of days off. You know, it was all about making a good record. It's not about ability or anything like that. It's like the ability comes from the knowledge of knowing when to do it and when not to do it. That's what we've learned over the years. We've been together 45 years. We've got the hang of this now. We know you how do. to do this. You you know? We know how to make a good record. You never quit, quit. I got it. 